All right, hello everyone, welcome back. We are finally here with Boruto Chapter 14, Duty. And this chapter was pretty good. Once again, Boruto continuing its streak of very good chapters. This one is no different. And this one also has one of my favorite covers. Uh, we got Mr. Koji himself on the cover and we got him in his dope new fit. One thing I will say about this fit though, it looks exactly like Naruto's fit from Shippuden. Like the pants are different, but like look at the jacket. It's got the uh, it's black, it has the zipper, it has the uh, the color pattern down here, the same as Naruto. So it's not orange, of course, it's uh, red and black instead of orange and black. So very interesting. Even the collar has, even has like the same collar. So very interesting, it's a similar design. Uh, the rest of it isn't too similar though. And then we got the cloak that Koji usually wears anyways. But other than that, this is a very cool cover. I really like it, especially with the background. I, I think this is one of the better covers we've gotten. This might be like top three out of all the covers we've gotten so far. But anyways, let's go ahead and get right into the chapter. So to start off with, oh so, uh, for anyone watching this on YouTube, a little bit different than usual. I'm actually doing this live on Twitch right now uh, over at Black ACC. I'll probably put the link in the description or it's always in the description, but uh, I might put the at on the screen. I don't know. We'll see what the editor does. Um, yeah, I'm doing this live on Twitch. I might do this more often. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, in case you see chat messages pop up or anything, that is why. But anyways, let's get into this. So of course, last chapter we ended up with Boruto getting captured by the leaf after getting shot by Jura. In this chapter, it starts off with Boruto in the interrogation room. And guess who comes back? We have a side character come back, Mr. Ibiki himself. One of the leaf's top interrogators, or I think he's the lead interrogator. Regardless, it's cool to see him. It's definitely been a problem in Boruto, Naruto, Next Generation, where we just haven't been seeing too many side characters. It's just mainly, you know, Boruto, Naruto, Sasuke, and that's about it. Like, they're always in every chapter, and then there's a bunch of side characters we never see, like uh, Metal Lee, Rock Lee, Kakashi. Kakashi hasn't been in the manga at all, so it's still cool to see characters like Ibiki making a comeback and actually being shown and having a role. Ibiki actually has a pretty good role in this chapter himself, which is nice to see. But anyways, uh, we start off in the interrogation room. Konohamaru tells Boruto, you're finally waking up, your wounds have been healed by Himawari. And he just kind of gives him a gist of what happened. The uh, Stinju did leave. Uh, Boruto is in handcuffs, so that way he can't use uh, the teleportation jutsu to escape because the cuffs are restricting his chakra flow. And they also can't be broken because if he tries to break him, he's just going to hurt himself. Boruto asked, well, how's everyone else? Konohamaru says the enemy ran off. They lost several people in this invasion, but the actual targets like Sarada, Himawari are safe, as well as the Inoshikacho trio. And then we cut to Inojin in the hospital, and once again, we get another character who a lot of people have been waiting to see for a while. We have Sakura back in the manga once more, as we see her here helping heal Inojin from his injuries and basically just doing a checkup to make sure Himawari did everything correct. Cause if you don't remember in the last chapter, Himawari actually used her, used her new nine tail powers to heal Inogen. Basically Inogen is all right. He is still like out of commission due to the fact that his chakra flow was disrupted by the injury. But Sakura says he should be making a full recovery eventually. And we get this shot of Eno looking very sad about what happened, which makes sense, you know, it's her son. Her son about died out on the battlefield. You never want to see that happen, especially uh, Eno has already seen death before. If you remember right, in the fourth Great Ninja War, Eno and Shukamaru's dad were both blown up at the hideout by the Ten Tails. So I wouldn't be surprised if a Ten Tail being incarnate or the Shinju killing Inogen or almost killing Inogen brought back those memories for her. Anyways, Konohamaru continues the interrogation on Boruto and he basically says he's got a bunch of questions for him. And we also have the Okage, uh, Amato, at least in my opinion, it seems like Amato is being uh, 
transmission, the interrogation, plus the two leaf elders. Yes, those two old people who just never seem to die are still alive and they are also listening in and partaking in this interrogation via the Leafs uh, mental network. Uh, Konohamaru is just basically asking questions about like what they wanted from Sarada and Himawari and while this is happening, Ada of course is spying on the entire thing using her ocular ability, the Shinna Renegon. Pretty sure I mispronounced that but let's just move on. And she's basically telling Kawaki that it started and then Damon or Damion uh, makes fun of Kawaki, saying, what are you going to do if Boruto decides to tell everyone the truth? Um, how how everyone's going to react to that? What are you, you know, like, he's basically giving him shit. Like, you know, Boruto right now has a chance to completely blow up everything. How do you feel about that? And Kawaki just kind of brush it, brushes it off, saying, regardless of what he says, uh, he's still the reason the uh, seventh Hokage is gone because of him. The Hokage isn't safe, so the Hokage had to disappear. So Kawaki's basically making this big circle around to kind of deflect the blame from him fully on the Boruto. Even Kawaki himself is starting to fall for the whole this is all Boruto's fault. Even though Kawaki basically caused this entire thing. And Kawaki is still dead set on killing Boruto, saying that's the only option. And while these three are discussing that, we get a shot of Mitsuki right here. Who I'm pretty sure is listening into Kawaki, Ada, and Damon's entire conversation. I'm pretty sure he's just like right outside of the place that they're at. And then we cut back to Boruto, Konohamaru, and them continuing the uh, interrogation. And Boruto is telling him about who these people were and what they are. And he tells them that yes, these divine tree people are basically copies of the people they've been devouring. Such as Sasuke, who is the base for Hidari, who they just fought. And also the one who took Miyogi, otherwise known as Matsuri, uh, and what is going on with them. And Boruto also lets Konohamaru know that Matsuri, the uh, Miyogi copy, is after him. That That's his target. And then we see Amato basically deducing all this information so he can come to the conclusion that basically what these clones or these incarnations of the Ten Tails want is information that they've grown sentient to the point of wanting information instead of just having that one goal of becoming a divine tree and then putting its roots in the ground they're evolving essentially is what he's saying and then konohamaru basically says this is the way konohamaru sees it is that they're trying to gain information by devouring sarada himawari and me boruto says basically like that and the one in charge of them all is jura and we get this nice dope ass shot of jura right here he is, Jura is breaking the fourth wall right here. Let's just, let's just be honest. Look at him. Look at this pose he's hitting. He knows the camera is looking at him. He knows that the manga panel is on him right now. So he's just like, damn, let me hit this pose real quick. But right here, we get confirmation that Jura isn't actually a clone or based off anyone. Uh, there was some speculation that he was based off of Ishiki, uh, based from the Due to the fact that these clones were made from Code's belt, that maybe Code's karma was somehow able to inject some of Ishiki's like likeness into Jura. That there was a bunch of theories, but basically the main thing was that like Jura was based off Ishiki. But now we have a definitive, like a definitive uh, confirmation that Jura himself is a direct incarnation of the Ten Tails. So Jura is just the Ten Tails, just now as a different being. And he's the one who's basically leading the, leading them all. And Boruto says, if we stop Jura, then we stop this crisis. And so everyone continues to listen to this. And then Konohamaru decides to ask the big, the big question. How do you know all this, Boruto? And he says, basically, depending on how you answer this, is gonna is gonna decide whether or not we can trust your information. And Boruto says that he can't reveal his source's identity, which we know is Koji. And, Am and it shows Amato here being kind of quiet or kind of interested in this information that Boruto drops, saying that he has the source, but he can't reveal its identity due to his safety. And this actually makes sense, because if you remember right, Koji is a cyborg, android, robot, whatever you want to call them, made by Amato. 
And we know that Amato has a shutdown code for Delta. So what's to say he doesn't have a shutdown code for Koji? Because as far as we know, Amato thinks Koji is dead. That Koji died after his fight with Ichiki. As far as we know, that's all Amato knows. So Koji might want to avoid letting Amato know that he lives due to the fact that if he knows that, maybe Amato for some reason would want to shut down Koji because remember, Koji has seen the future. So maybe there's a future where he met back up with Amato and Amato ended up shutting him down or something. Like there has to be a reason here for Koji not wanting his identity to be revealed beyond that. And I think it's very important that they show Amato. Like that just makes the most sense. Of course, uh, Amato knowing that Koji's still alive would be huge and it could have caused major issues. And you also have to keep in mind that Koji was part of the Karo, which was the enemy of the Leaf. So that's another reason why Koji probably doesn't want to be revealed. But I definitely do think the main issue here is Amato. Not letting Amato know that Koji's still alive is probably the main reason why they don't want to reveal why Boruto did not want to reveal his identity to the Leaf. Konohamaru says, so be you expect us to believe you despite you not being able to tell us what you actually like fully know. And then Boruto says, yes, because the only reason I'm still alive is because of my intel, because most of you want me dead. And right after he said this, we finally see the Leaf Elders decide to speak up. They basically tell Boruto, hey, don't get cocky. Uh, you're still a hostile of the Leaf, which means we'll be willing to eliminate you by any means necessary. Uh, and he, the, the male Elder basically tells Boruto, you're not leaving that room alive. And then we see Shikamaru kind of sweating this because if you remember correctly, Shikamaru is trying to help Boruto. Shikamaru believes in Boruto. And then the female elder speaks up and says, so now that you know that's uh, speak with caution, you know, be mindful because if you cooperate, we'll at least offer you a painless death. So it seems like the leaf elders are completely set on after this interrogation, having Boruto be killed immediately. The female elder then proceeds to ask Borto, "Why did you send? A, why did you kill Lord Seventh? Because I, because they remember the Leaf believes that Naruto is dead." And then we get a flashback to Shikamaru and Boruto's conversation uh, that they had between each other with the uh, mine, with Eno setting up that private mine channel for them. Now, here's the thing: I don't know if this is a full flashback. Because this might be before, this might be like during his previous attack, or this might be from when uh, Boruto last came to the village, uh, when he was fighting with Mitsuki, this could be from there. That's what I'm assuming this uh, conversation on the right is taking place from. But I'm not certain, this just could be from just a little bit earlier, so I don't think it makes too big of a difference at what time point that took place. But basically, uh, it's just Shikamaru going back through the logic, saying that, hey, Boruto, if you don't intend to kill Kawaki, you know you have to keep taking the blame for what happened to Naruto. And then we see something very interesting here. Shikamaru says omnipotence, or he wants to talk about omnipotence, right? The, the, uh, the jutsu that caused everyone's minds to swap Boruto and Kawaki around in their heads and memories, correct? In the panel itself, the word is blank. Shikamaru cannot even say the word. He can't, like, he doesn't know it exists right here. We see, seeing as blank affects lies of Kawaki, I'd like to avoid making him feel corner again. We know that's omnipotence, and it's just Shikamaru isn't even able to say it due to the Jutsu's ability to try to cover up exactly what happened, which is crazy to see that it's that powerful that Shikamaru himself can't even you know, comprehend saying that word. And Shikamaru, when he was thinking about this, ends up causing his memory to actually kind of blank out for a second. And he kind of forgets why he finds Boruto trustworthy. So we can see right here that because he started thinking about omnipotence, it started altering his mind again to make sure he doesn't remember that it happens, which is what Boruto said has happened to other people. In the previous chapters, anytime someone knows about it, they end up forgetting about it because the jutsu is trying to hide itself from being known. 
That way it can continue to have Boruto and Kawaki's place swapped in each other's and other people's memories. And one thing I find really interesting about this is how Sasuke dealt with this because how often did Sasuke have to doubt his memories to continue to be with Boruto during that time while they were a uh, rogue from the village and before he was captured by the Claw Grimes? I mean, is this something Sasuke went through on the daily? It would make sense that the thing that kept Sasuke there were Boruto and kept reminding him that like, wait, this is Boruto Uzumaki, this isn't Kawaki, you know, this isn't Boruto didn't kill Naruto, Kawaki didn't, or uh, Boruto didn't send away Naruto, Kawaki didn't stuff. The thing that would keep Sasuke grounded would, would have been Sarada, because if you remember right, Sarada awakening her Mangeku shotting gun, begging Sasuke to save Boruto is what gave him the conviction to believe Sarada's story that Boruto is actually innocent. And you would have to assume that would be the one thing that would keep Sasuke focused on the fact that Boruto is innocent, rather than letting Omnipotence kind of uh, change his mind to Kawaki being innocent and Boruto being the guilty. Did he have to deal with that on a daily basis? I mean, we see Shikamaru here dealing with it. It's just, it's very interesting to think about that. And I wonder if we're ever gonna get like a Another flashback chapter to when Boruto and Sasuke were out on the run and we get to see Sasuke actually having to reconvince himself. This is Boruto Uzumaki, this is Boruto Uzumaki and stuff like that. It would be very interesting to see if we get a chapter like that in the future. But anyways, continuing on, Shikamaru uh, does reaffirm himself that this is Boruto Uzumaki and that he has to believe him and has to help him out of the situation. And so Shikamaru basically says, or tells himself that I have to find a way to make sure Boruto doesn't die in this room. Boruto then drops a huge bomb on the leaf by saying he didn't kill Naruto. Lord Naruto or Lord Seventh is still alive as well as Hinata, his wife. They're just both somewhere safe. And this shocks everyone in the leaf. Ada is still listening on to the story. And judging by Ada's look, you can kind of see that she's surprised that Boruto actually dropped this information. And then Boruto does something even more surprising. The female Leaf Elder asks, if they're both safe, where are they? Why do they need to hide? And Boruto says, I'm not telling. So right there was Boruto's moment to reveal Kawaki and what he's done, but instead, he does what he told Shikamaru he would do. He continues to take the blame for what's going on. And that definitely, judging by Ada's look in the next panel, she's a little shocked by that, you know? She's surprised that he actually kept the secret. And this, of course, upsets the Leaf. <laughs> the male elder is uh, speechless that Boruto would even say that. And Boruto just says, I haven't told you a single lie, I'm just not revealing everything. The elders continue to get mad, saying that Boruto is just wanting a painful death at this point. And then Ibiki finally steps up, complimenting Boruto, telling him that's the spirit, that they're finally heading in the direction of an actual interrogation. Anyways, then we switch to Shikamaru, and he gets in contact with Ino through the mind technique, or the mind transfer, or the mind communication jutsu. And he asks Ino, how's Inojin doing? And Ino basically says, Inojin's good. Alright, you can quit trying to act like all polite and stuff, what do you want? This is about Boruto, right? So Ino is just straight to business again. And Shikamaru says, okay, yeah, you're right. I want to talk to Boruto privately right now. Can you please transmit transmit me to him immediately? And then, this surprised me. I was not expecting this, but it makes complete sense. Ino shows some hesitation here and basically says, are you ordering me as the Hokage? And then she reminds Shikamaru that uh, using the mind trans transmission jutsu like this is against laws, it's against regulations. That just Ino and Shikamaru talking right now is violating five regulations by itself. Plus, the thing about these communications is all the content is required to be reported. So, her already hiding the fact that Boruto and Shikamaru have communicated using the technique is already breaking a huge regulation. And Shikamaru basically says, please, Eno, you're the only one I can ask. You're the only one I can trust on this. And then Eno basically says, why do you trust Boruto so much? I don't understand it. 
And Shikamaru says, I understand why you feel so much distrust, but please trust me. I need your help, not as the Hokage, but as a friend. Ino takes a second and then she takes a look at Inojin and sees him in his uh, comatose state. And she tells Shikamaru that she's sorry, but she cannot help him anymore with this. And this completely surprised me. I was not expecting Ino to completely tell Shikamaru no. Like, I understand her hesitating, but I honestly thought after Shikamaru says, I'm asking you as a friend, I thought they were going to do the, you know, like, you see this so often in stories where it's like, I'm not asking you as the leader, I'm asking you as a friend, or I'm not asking you as, like, as your rival, I'm asking you as your friend. Like, you see this stuff in other media all the time. So I thought for sure after Shikamaru hit her with that, she was going to reluctantly open the transmission, but now... Her seeing what happened to Inogen and her thinking that this is all Boruto's fault, she does she can't continue to help because in her mind, if she keeps doing this stuff, if she keeps helping Shikamaru help Boruto, it's gonna lead to more incidents that what happened to Inogen happened to others in the Leaf Village. And so she tells Shikamaru no, and uh, Shikamaru starts to freak out because he's like, "Well, oh, crap! What do I do now?" Right? And we cut back to Ibiki and Boruto, and Ibiki has finally decided. To really start the interrogation, just like he said, he tells Boruto, uh, if you don't talk, you're gonna die as a disgraced Hokage, Hokage killing traitor, and then he slams Boruto's head into the table, and he tells Boruto that he's been itching to beat the shit out of him for the past three years for killing Naruto, and then we have a line here from Boruto which has a very sad meaning. Uh, he basically tells Ibiki that it must be nice to have so much free time to only be thinking about beating the shit out of him. And right after he says this, Ibiki proceeds to just sock him right in the mouth, which, I mean, I understand why Ibiki did that. But when you really think about that Boruto line, he's been on the run. He's been running from not just the Leaf, but from all the hidden villages. If I remember right in the Koji chapter where he uh, Koji found him with the frog and they first met, he was running from hidden sand from hidden sand ninjas so boards has been running from everyone he's not just running from the leaf so he's been on the run and then once he met koji he had to deal with the information of the future and training like you know boards trying to figure out a way to stop the sinju from even happening which as we know now failed but boards also had to train because koji decided to give him all the powers he had in the future just train him with it now, which is why he has the teleportation technique. And you also have to take into account all the training Sasuke did with him. And how we how we were talking earlier about how Sasuke had to deal with omnipotence, just like how Shikamaru was. Maybe there was a time where Sasuke actually got like very aggressive towards Boruto and treated him like an enemy. Like there might have been a time where Sasuke almost killed Boruto due to the omnipotence. Boruto had to defend himself for real against Sasuke until Sasuke was able to remember uh, Sarada's whole deal and that Boruto is innocent. Like, that very easily could have been a thing. But yeah, Boruto basically for the last couple of years of his life, he's just had no free time. He's constantly having to deal with other stuff, whether it be saving the future, dealing with the present, uh, dealing with the fact that his entire life got changed. Like, that line, it must be nice to have so much free time isn't really a dig at Ibiki, it's more of just Boruto kind of wishing he had that, you know? Kind of like how he did at the beginning of Naruto, or Boruto, Naruto, Next Generations. In my opinion, that line is very deep. Maybe I'm overlooking into it, but when I read that, I was like, damn, that, that line has such a deep meaning coming from Boruto. It, it truly does, in my opinion. We continue on to the next page, and Ibiki continues to beat the shit out of Boruto. Boruto starts coughing up blood. And then Shikamaru commands Ibiki to stop because Boruto is not the type to break under pain. And then Shikamaru decides to tell Konohamaru and Ibiki to summon Mitsuki instead, because instead of using pain, they're going to use Venom to get the information out of Boruto. Konohamaru instantly resists this, or... Decides to argue against his choice, saying he doesn't think it's wise for Mitsuki to even be in here because he thinks that Mitsuki has is going to basically kill Boruto immediately because Mitsuki has shown that he completely hates Boruto. 
And Chikamaru says, that's fine. If Mitsuki kills him, I'll take the fall. Call him in now. Now remember, Boruto and Mitsuki have talked. And Boruto kind of got through Mitsuki during their last uh, talk after their fight about the sun and all that stuff. But it seems like the rest of the Leaf doesn't know. And as we know, Mitsuki is still questioning himself on a lot of stuff, especially about who his son is and stuff like that. Ada finally decides to, uh, on the next page, Ada finally decides to report to Kawaki what's been going on. And she tells Kawaki that it seems like Boruto is dead set on not telling anyone what he did. And this confuses Kawaki. And Ada says, yeah, it seems like Boruto's trying to protect your reputation in the Leaf. And then Daemon gets up and basically says, like, you know, like, what the fuck? Why is Boruto doing this? I don't understand it. And we get a last shot of Kawaki just looking extremely perplexed right here down here at the bottom of this page. And we get a shot of Kawaki just kind of looking perplexed. I don't think he was expecting that from Boruto. If anything, maybe Kawaki was expecting that today was the day the entire omnipotence got revealed and he was just kind of hoping... Or he kind of maybe Kawaki knows how it works that where even if someone knows about it, their memory kind of gets reset. So maybe that's why he wasn't too worried, even if Borto did speak. So the fact that Borto decided not to speak at all just completely perplexed him. But regardless, we move on. We see that Mitsuki is getting let into the room, and we see that Shikamaru hands Mitsuki something and he tells Mitsuki, Remember, we are Shinobi, and this is a mission. Control your emotions and perform your duty. Understand? And then we get the scene. Mitsuki walks into the interrogation room. And Konohamaru tells Mitsuki, Listen, Borto is a witness. He has critical intel. Extract the info. Just do not kill him. And then we get this uh, panel of Borto. Or this page, I guess I'll say. Asking Mitsuki if you're still idiotically searching for your son and right away <laughs> Mitsuki eyes get uh pressed he turns on sage mode charges Boruto slams him against the wall and he yells at him is that all you have to say you ungrateful traitor this causes Ibiki and Konohamaru to stand up to try to pull Mitsuki back but while in but in this quick moment Mitsuki releases a snake behind Boruto and undoes the handcuffs that are sealing Boruto up. And he whispers in Boruto's ear, your items are in the West Wing security office. There are two guards there. At this point, Ibiki uh, tears Mitsuki off of Boruto, telling him, and then we see Konohamaru yelling at Mitsuki that he warned him not to do that. And then Boruto, now with his hands free, makes the hand sign for the teleportation technique and he and he decides to leave one last word to the leaf saying that he doesn't see any of them as foes he he's okay with sharing intel as he decides and how they use that intel will be up to them and with this boruto teleports away and konohamaru just says is shocked by the fact that he managed to slip the cuffs Ibiki says, I thought those things were supposed to be resistant to high impact, uh, that those handcuffs were supposed to be resistant to high impact. And he basically curses Amato for making uh, these junk cuffs. And Konohamaru uh, decides to quit, uh, keep thinking about it, saying, did Mitsuki unlock them? But he says, that can't be possible. The only people who know the key code to get those cuffs off are Ibiki, Konohamaru, and Shikamaru. And he also believes that Mitsuki has no reason to help Boruto at all. And then we get a flashback real quick to, of when Shikamaru grabbed Mitsuki's hand right before he let him into the room. And in his hands, we see that Shikamaru actually gave Mitsuki the code to unlock the cuffs. So that is why Shikamaru wanted Mitsuki to come in here. He knew that with Mitsuki, uh, Mitsuki was a, he knew that Mitsuki had enough faith in Boruto that if he gave him the code, he would unlock him and let him get out. We didn't get this little funny scene here. <laughs> Um, very glad to see a scene like this in here. So far, we haven't really gotten, like, these comedic scenes, really, in Boruto 2 Blue Vortex. So it's kind of nice to get this one. Uh, it's Boruto teleporting into the West Wing. He grabs his sword and his cape. Just completely shocks the two guards that are in there, and Boruto tells them, Hey, don't feel bad, this ain't your fault. And then he teleports right back out. 
I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, you gotta always make sure you get your drip, you know, you can't leave your drip behind. But anyways, we cut back to the interrogation room. Mitsuki is apologizing to Konohamaru. And Konohamaru says, look, don't feel too bad about it. Uh, Shikamaru let you in here. He's the one who's gonna take the blame for this. The two elders uh, start to reprimand Shikamaru for this, saying that you wasted this opportunity to, opportunity to bring Boruto down. And the elders, Shikamaru apologizes, saying that he'll launch a manhunt for Boruto. But the elders tell Shikamaru that there will be consequences from this choice that he made. Very foreboding. Uh, maybe there's a chance Shikamaru gets removed from the Hokage spot. I'm not really sure. But that definitely doesn't spell good news for Shikamaru. Especially with these two Leaf Elders. Uh, just to make sure people know, these are the same people that ordered the Ochiha Massacre by Itachi. So, uh, yeah, I... Them saying there'll be lasting con consequences for this for Shikamaru definitely has me a little worried for him. So I'm hoping it's nothing too crazy, but you never know. Uh, we cut to the next panel and we have Sarda and Sumire busting into Shikamaru's Hokage's office, asking them what happened with Boruto's interrogation. Shikamaru tells them he escaped. Sarda is uh, surprised by this. But before anything else gets said, the Mind, mind Communication Corpse contacts Shikamaru, telling them that Konkuro from the hidden village in the sand is wanting to contact them. Shikamaru takes the call, and we get to see Konkuro in the manga. I don't remember if he was in the first part, in uh, Next Generations. But regardless, like I said earlier, it's really nice to be seeing all these side characters. I mean, we've seen Ibiki, uh, the Elders. Though, to be fair, I could go without seeing the Elders. But we get Ibiki, Konohamaru, Shikamaru, uh, those Hidden Leaf Guards, Konkuro. We get a lot of new side characters. Not new side characters, but we get a lot of side characters in this. Glad to see that they're actually using more of the cast that's available in the universe. But basically, Konkuro tells uh, Shikamaru that they were attacked, Gara was defeated, and Shinki was as well. If you remember, Shinki is Gara's adopted son who controls the Metal Sand. This surprises Shikamaru, and Konkuro continues to explain that Shinki got infected by the tree affliction, or the tree virus, basically is what they're calling it. And Conqueror is basically saying, can you lend us a hand? They do, he does say that Gar is still alive. So Gar is not dead. Shinki's been treed. And now that we know that, we actually pick up on the cliffhanger we had from last chapter. And it turns out the tree person that is now joining the Sinju is actually Shinki's clone who is named Ryu. And let me just say, he looks pretty badass. Like... This design here, it looks pretty fucking good. Even his weird, like, head thingy with the, uh, bejewels. Or not bejewels, but, like, the studs. Like, it, it looks pretty good. Like, Ryu looks intimidating as fuck. But, yeah, now we know that this is actually Shinki's, uh, tree clone. If I remember right, I think I was predicting Orochimaru, but nope. It did end up staying to be Shinki, so it, it seems like another one of Koji's, uh, prophecies that he saw... Because we did see a sneak peek of Ryu in the last chapter as one of Koji's prophecies for like possible futures. Another one has come to pass and now Ryu has joined the fold so that is where the chapter ends. So overall a really uh, really eventful chapter. A bunch of stuff happened. Um, like I said it was really good. There's a lot of good information. It was cool to see all the, all the side characters. A lot of side characters come back. Um, we get that little funny moment with Boruto, we get to see Mitsuki is willing to help him as well, which is actually huge, in my opinion. There could be a chance that Shikamaru is maybe removed from Hokage or something, because, I mean, I really don't know what else lasting consequences could mean, you know, with the elders, so. Shikamaru, so, like, hear me out here. Shikamaru gets removed from Hokage, him and Mitsuki go rogue from the Hidden Leaf, and they decide to go help Boruto. Boom, there you go. We got the, we got the group of Koji, Shikamaru, Mitsuki, and Boruto trying to figure out what to do. That'd be pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. That'd be pretty badass. I don't think that's what's going to happen, but I'm just saying that'd be pretty cool. But one thing I do think could possibly happen is Mitsuki leaving the Hidden Leaf Village to go join Boruto. That, in my opinion, does seem very likely. But 
in terms of what will happen next chapter it seems like they're setting up to go to the hidden sand village which is amazing as you guys know one of my previous videos i was talking about how boruto kind of has an issue with everything kind of taking place in the hidden leaf village especially in naruto next generations uh, in that manga it literally felt like everything happened at the leaf village or in some random dimension so i'm glad to see that in two blue vortex it was following that same issue where it just seemed like you know boruto went and left the hidden leaf village three times in this chap in the first 14 chapters which was kind of setting up a bad precedent for me but it seems like now we're going to be heading out of the hidden leaf village and it looks like we're going to be going to the hidden santa village to go help them so i think next chapter we're probably going to see uh if i had to take a guess maybe like sarada mitsuki uh, maybe she could die heading to the hidden sand village to provide backup. I don't know who else would go with them. I guess Konohamaru would go with them, but it'll be interesting to see because Konkuro is asking for help. So I don't, I wonder how much help is going to get sent because if the hidden sand village got attacked, did any of the other villages get attacked during that same time period? So the hidden leaf village and the hidden sand were attacked at the same time. So it'll be interesting to see if any more got attacked. It doesn't seem like any more got attacked. It seems like Shinky was the only one who got trade this time. So, but regardless, uh, I will say this. Shinky being treed is very scary. Shinky, if you guys don't know much about him, uh, go watch the anime episodes he's in. He's a very dangerous individual. He is very cool. The Metal Sands he uh, controls is very powerful. I'm assuming Ryu is going to have the same ability. Except now he has the belts, so he can teleport between them stuff, uh, the stuff and like that. And we actually to see if he's able to control the belts using the metal sand ability, because if he can basically just move the belts around and still teleport through them, that's going to be insane. But there's just so many possibilities you can take with this. Ryu is going to be a scary individual. In my opinion, he might end up being the second strongest behind Jura right now. But well, who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, I'm not going to make a wild card prediction for this uh, next chapter because this feels like a pretty good, like, cut clean spot, you know? Uh, basically, the only thing we have to go on is Boruto is presumably going back to where Koji is. And the Hidden Sand Village is asking for help. Other than that, we really don't know what's going to happen next. So there's really nothing too big to predict on. I'll go ahead and make the uh, most common prediction. I'm pretty sure I've said this like three different times. Kakashi will be in the next chapter. Kakashi is going to be one of the members sent to go help the Hidden Sand Village. Because how else do you show the Hidden Sand Village that you're willing to help them by sending a former Hokage to help when their Kazekage and the son of the Kazekage have been uh, defeated and one of them was treed. So that's my wild card prediction. Kakashi will be in the next chapter. Do I think it's going to happen? No, but I hope it does. But other than that, let me know down below what you guys thought of this chapter. I'm sorry for being a couple days late and for uh, kind of rushing through this, but uh, a lot of stuff going on right now, so I just didn't have time for it. Hoping next month I can take a better uh, sit down and be able to like, really digest chapter earlier as well. But yeah, so sorry about the delay. Let me know down below what you guys thought of this chapter, what you guys think is going to happen uh, next chapter, what you guys think about Ryu's design. Like I said earlier, I think it's super amazing. I, I love it. Uh, I think he's one of the better looking uh, Sinjus so far. I think Bug's the worst looking one. Let's be honest. Bug is just a very odd design. But other than that, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe for more Boruto content in the future. Have a good rest of your day slash night, and I will see you all next time. Peace out.